In today's show, we're going to talk about Power App string manipulation. So this is one of those really important skills that a lot of people don't put a lot of value in, but being able to take a string of text that you get inside Power Apps, whether it be from a data source or from the user, and manipulate that to get just the pieces you want and manipulate those pieces even further is a pretty important core skill. So today's video, we're going to dive into the different functions available to do that. So it won't be flashy, but once again, this is just the type of things that you need to know to be better at Power Apps. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about Power App string manipulation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some text and we're just going to look at the different ways you can work with it. Because over the years of doing things like Power Apps and Flow, and even back to my PowerShell days, I always found that the ability to take input, whether that be from a user typing it in or from a data source, and being able to manipulate that text, pull out the pieces I want, change the pieces I want, were really core things. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some functions that are such as left, right, mid, find, uh, length. We're going to look at uh, replace, substitute. So just some of these different functions that I want to make sure that you put into your bag of skills, right? You're going to look at this video and be like, eh, boring, who cares? But these are the type of things that you put in your toolbox and down the road when it comes up, you can just do it on the fly and you're like, oh my goodness, that made my life so much easier. So had it come, come up on a couple different customer calls this week, so I thought I'd just sit down, make this pretty quick video to walk you through it. All right, that's enough rambling. Let's just jump over and take a look at it. All right, so over here on my desktop, let's jump in and start messing with this, right? I got a blank tablet out. There's nothing fancy to show you ahead of time. We're just going to kind of dig and play, and who knows what tangents I'll get off on, because that's kind of what I do. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a text input on here. It's text input three, which tells you that I have uh, messed up a couple of starts this video already. But so here we're going to paste in uh, just some simple text, right? My goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy. Please don't tell him, right? And Chewy is laying right there on my feet sleeping because it's Sunday afternoon. We're supposed to be watching football, but I want to make you a video first. So my goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy. So there's a text, uh, uh, a string that we can kind of mess with. I put it in an input label here just to make it easier for me to change it as we were going. And so there's several different functions we want to look at. But let's start with a couple of the core ones first. And the first core one, I'm going to throw a label on the screen, pull it down here. And so this is called, or we're going to use the lin function. So I'm going to type in lin so you can see that's what we used. And so what the lin function does is that gets the length of a particular text string. So this comes up a lot that we need to know the, uh, the length of a text string when we start doing some of the work we're going to do. So I wanted to show you that one first, right? Lin text input three text. And so if we go over here and just say, you know, um, right, as I add, the length of this text input keeps changing, right? So lin is 67. Okay. So that's the first function that you need. And you don't ever really do, right? You can't do anything practical with that, but that's a key component of the, the string manipulation we're about to do. So there's the lin function. The next function I want to show you is the find function. So we're going to do find colon, right? So that way you know what function I did. And so with the find function, what we're going to do is say ambersand find. And it says, all right, what text do you want to find? So what we're going to do is we're going to pass this function um, a string, and we're going to find a specific, or the character, then what number is that in the string, right? So for example, my goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy, period. So maybe we want to find that sec that first period in this thing so we can break this up into two separate sentences. So I'm going to do just like this, right? We want to find the text of a dot. And, um, and so then we're going to do comma, and then what text we want to look in. Text input three dot text. Just like that, right? So now we can see that the dot is the 35th characters. And if we change this, so let's do G, right? This should be number, this should be four. So there, right? Because that, my goodness, G is four. You can also find a whole thing. So maybe we want to find the first instance of is. Well, the first instance of is starts at character 19. So the find function is really neat for messing with strings because sometimes, not sometimes, almost every time I do a string solution, where I have to go and manipulate it, I need to find, because I want to go find a special character in there so I can manipulate from that particular character. So lin and find, these are two pieces that just return numbers, but those numbers are going to be the key to the next function we want. So 
I mentioned this idea of maybe let's see if we can separate this thing into two separate sentences. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a label on here, and we're gonna say, all right, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do this to keep our label on going. So sentence one. Oh goodness, I can't type. It is um, Sunday, so you have to give me a, a, a pass, right? So sentence one, and if you haven't seen this before, right? And it's just concatenate. So we're just concatenating a string and. Uh, there's separate videos on that, if, but I, I think you're all good with the idea of sentence one and those values. Okay, so for sentence one, we want to get the leftmost thing, right? We want to start at the left, and we want to work our way right until we get to that uh, period. So there is a left function. This one gets used probably the most. So left, what text do we want to look at, right? And I'm just looking right up here to see like kind of these hints. That's how I don't memorize these things, right? I don't memorize the format of these functions. I just let the little cheater text tell me what to do. So the left of text input 3.txt, right? What we typed in the box. How many characters do we want to go? Well, once again, one, two, three. Well, we don't want to count those. We know how to find that, right? We're going to do a find. So we're going to say, well, find. And what do we want to find? We want to find the period. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And within what text? Text input three again. Text input three. Could I have given myself something harder to have to type over and over again? So find that, right? So we're going to take the left of that string and we're going to go to the number of spaces of that. Seems reasonable, so we'll close our thing. And look at that, just like that, sentence one. My goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy. Chewy, I hope your ears are closed, okay? So that is, right, this, it's not complex. It's just a matter of breaking up. When you start doing string manipulation, right, you gotta break it up into tiny little pieces, solve small problems, and then combine it together. So that was how we got sentence one. All right, how do we get sentence two? It's a little bit harder. Well, not harder, just different. Okay, to be fair, maybe harder is the right word. Um, so I just had to restart the video here because I screwed this demo up so poorly that I felt like I needed to do it again. And what happened is because I ended up with a third sentence in here, I made this a lot trickier on myself, which is good because it gives, it gives me a chance to teach you about seven more new things, but there were seven things I weren't planning on teaching. Anyway, I told you we'd get lost in a tangent, so I went and had a 20 minute tangent, I came back, here I am. Okay, so to get the second sentence, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to go in here and um, think about this a little bit differently because Right, we have three sentences. So, my goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy. Boom, we got that in there. Please don't tell him. We're good. But now we're going to have to get it, um, pull this middle sentence. And so to do that, we're going to use the um, mid function. So, right, so sentence two. And so the mid function has got an extra parameter. And this is where, I'm not going to lie, when I do this, when I did this a minute ago, the demo messed it up. And when I do it in PowerShell, it doesn't matter. Flow, all the places, I always kind of have to fight my way through the mid function. Because, I mean, it, it, it's easy, it's straightforward. But sometimes my math, my puzzling together don't go as well as they should. Okay. So I already gave you the hints. We're going to use the mid function. And so the first question, well, what text? Well, we know that one, yay. So we're gonna say, well, we wanna use text input three dot text. All right, that was easy. And then it says, all right, well, where do you wanna start? Oh, well, we want to start at the uh, the first period. Now from the last sentence, or last function, though, we know how to do that, right? So we could just go back up there and we could grab it, but we won't, we'll just type it in again. We're gonna say, we wanna find the first period within text input three dot text. And so if we do that, it's like, oh, nope, 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 you need more. All right, well, bummer. Um, or no, no, we don't. So we do that and like that. Okay, so then that would give us, because that just says start in the middle of this thing and give me the whole rest of the string, which is almost what we wanted, but not really, because in reality, we want to stop at the period again, okay? So now that we've done this, so now we've gotten sentence two, so now we need to figure out where that second period is, right? We know the first period is at um, nine, right? Where's my text thing? All right, the first period, oh, that's where the is. Nope, nope, this. So then we know the first period is at 35. So how do we figure out where the second period is? So let's do, let's step away from our sentence breakup and let's just go concentrate on that one problem first. 
This is where I messed up in the last demos. I should have done this to start. Okay, so go over here and we're gonna say, find second period, which is hilarious, which reminds me of high school, right? Second period, third period, all those things. Okay, so we're gonna use our friend find again. We're gonna find, um, what? We're gonna find a period just like this. And we're going to do it um, text input three dot text. Okay, so that's all the same. But now we're gonna use this optional parameter. So find has an optional parameter called start number. So where do you want me to start looking for this period? Oh, okay. Well, I want you to start looking for that period. Mm, well, pretty, character 36 in this case, right? I wanna start at one less or one more than the last uh, period. So we can't just type in 36, that, or I mean, I guess we could, right? <laughs> It's kind of cheating. Uh, let's see if that comes back though. Oh, well, we did come back with 58, so cheating works. <laughs> cheating always works, doesn't it? Yeah. Man, we won't get into a moral conversation about that. Anyway, so what are we gonna do? We need to find that um, 35, but then we need to add one to that. So I'm gonna grab this function because we know this finds the 35, so control copy. So let's get rid of our 36. So we're gonna put in find our um, that, but that's the period, so it's gonna find it right away. So then you can just do a plus one, right? These are just numbers. So we're just saying, go find the first period, add a character, and start searching there. So start searching from character 36. And so the next period, this period, right? Which I guess will be the bigger string, is at location 58. Ah, so now we have the pieces of the puzzle. We just need to go do some assembly. So let's go back over here. And before we do the assembly, though, one thing I want to point out is notice that our my sentence two starts with period and a space. Yeah. What do we do? Well, we've already talked about this, right? We're just going to increase our mid number by two. So, right, this is just taking that same sentence and we just added two to it to make it happier. Okay, so that's good. We're in a good spot. So let's do a comma here. So now it's saying, all right, how many characters do you want to be in the midstream? Before we were just saying mid was from the middle all the way to the end. Now we're gonna say we only wanna to go to the middle and then a certain number of characters. And so what we wanna go, right, is we wanna go, it's, it's 21, right? So let's type in 21 and show that shows what we want. Oh, nope, it's not, it's 22. So 22 is the number that we're looking for here. All right, so how do we get Power Apps to programmatically return that there's 22 between the two? Well. We know that this find is um, the first period, and we know this is the second one, and they are 23 apart. Uh, I think you kind of get the idea here. Let's try, let's grab this, right? So this is my 58, and we'll throw another label down here. So label, okay? So this label, so if we do that, that gives me 58. But So what if we take that, and then we say, all right, you, I want to subtract from you the location of the first one, right? So if we do this, boom, boom, we get 23. And we know from our testing that we actually need 22, right? Why? Because we need to bump up one from the period. So find doom, 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 doom. Add a one to that. Oh but we don't want to add, we, we want to add a one, but the way that I'm going to do this, you know, you could subtract a one if you were really comfortable, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in parentheses this, right? So get the uh, second period, that's 58, right? That's what this whole first thing does, and then subtract the first period plus one. So that's the length of the string that we want to get. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, but we had to add two because of the space. You're right. But if we add two, um, then what happens is we only go out and we stop at 21, which doesn't get us that last period. So we need to do just one, which accounts for bumping out the extra space. So if we take this function now, control copy, and replace the 22 right, with that, we now have a programmatic way, right, of my goodness, Chewy is fat and lazy, boom, 
please don't tell him, boom, and we can go change this. Please don't tell him I said it, right? And because it's all dynamic and we can get rid of my Chewy is, we'll make fat lowercase. My goodness, Chewy is fat, um, tired and lazy. We'll make that lowercase, right? But my strings are fine because everything is being computed dynamically. So as we manipulate these, right? And if we change this, please, please. That one doesn't do anything because we haven't messed with it yet. But so this, right? is how we did the first one. This is how we did the second one. So, and I realized the first time you do this, probably the first 10 times you do this, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna like scream and yell and be like, Shane's so stupid, this shit doesn't work. It does, you just have to keep breaking it down into baby steps. So lots of labels on your screen to figure out what numbers equal what will go a long way to keeping you from cussing at me and hurting Chewy's poor little precious ears, okay? So every time I say his name, he kind of wiggles. He's like, shut up. Anyway, so let's look at the third sentence. And so the third sentence is, um, as you've probably guessed, we're going to use the right function. Now, I typically, I don't think I've ever actually used the right function in a customer's Power App. I think I've used it in PowerShell, but not in Power Apps. But we're going to teach it to you today just to be uh, complete. So right, all right, so what text do we want to go from? Well, text input three dot text has served us well so far. And then how many characters to the right do you want to go? So this is where it gets really complicated, right? Because now we're trying to figure out, well, we want to do it from that second period, but we don't really remember what the second period is. Um, so we have to do a lot of pieces here. So I think what we're going to do, oh, I don't want to do it, but we can, we could go through and um, so we could count, right? So 6, 12, 14, I think 15 is probably about right. What does this do? Ah, that was close. Pretty good for a guess off the top of my head. All right, there you go. <laughs> right, 16, 16 gets you the police. And so we're not going to go fight through the whole process of finding that because it's not typically something I do where I have to go and find. But Because you can't do a find from the right. So we'd have to go do a find, and we'd have to know that we had two periods in there, and so we're trying to find a third, and this just doesn't come up. So what might come up for you, though, and where I've done this type of stuff more likely, is there's another way to do what we've been doing this far, right? So there's, there's that one. We're going to do it. Let's throw another label out here. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a... Um, are you, what are you gonna do? We're gonna do a replace, okay? And so in a replace statement, right, replace what it's meant to do, so we'll do an ampersand. So we do a replace. And so replace is going to force us to use all of our starting numbers again, right? So find these things and then, um, you know, work your way through. So. Actually, let's not do replace yet. Let's do, instead of replace, let's do find, because find is easier for your first look at this. Find and replace work exactly the same way. The difference is that find does it by uh, hunting for text. Replace does it by the number system that we did before. And I did not mean to do find, because we know what find does. We've done that one. I meant to do substitute. I don't know. You spell substitute something like that. Good news, PowerShell, make sure I spell it right over here. There we go. So substitute, sorry, substitute and replace, not uh, do the same thing. The difference being is that substitute is going to do it with uh, text. So if you want to search out text and get rid of it. So if we take our text input uh, three dot text. All right, all right, what's the old text? Let's get rid of that fat. That was not very nice. Let me call Chewy fat. And we'll call him, instead we'll say he's big boned, right? So substitute, find the word fat, and put in the word big bone. So if we grab this, it takes that whole string that we had before. My goodness, Chewy is big bone, tired and lazy. Please don't tell him, right? It took this whole thing up here and replaced it. And if we um, go up here, let's go, let's just do it like this. Please don't tell him I said he was fat. You can see that it is replacing again, right? So my Chewy is big bone, or my goodness, Chewy's big bone, and uh, don't tell him I said he was big boned, okay? 
So uh, substitute's really good for that. All right, that's straightforward, right? Yeah, give it a string, tell it to go find it, and change it out. But sometimes in cases like where I need to do this thing where I want to get rid of the um, a bunch of stuff before, what I will do is I will, uh, because I know how to get this first sentence, right? Is I can go in here and I can say, all right, that's how you get the first sentence. I want to um, grab that. So let's see. So that would be a string. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to grab that thing. And I'm going to say, all right, come down here. And I want to do a substitute. So here's the text I'm looking for. My old text is the function for getting the first sentence. And what do I want to replace it with is I'll replace it with nothing. So look at that. So now I've used substitute to trim my string down. So sentence one, or right, it was all of this. And now we're just saying go find the first sentence. Right? That, and this is just the code for our first sentence right here. Find our first sentence. Oh, sorry. This is our code for our first sentence. So, and that returns that string. Right? We've, we've proven that array. Go get that first sentence of string. And then just replace it in our string with nothing. So I do this a lot of times when I'm doing like bulk mass um, manipulations is I'm like, hey, I want to go get this first block of code, do something with it. And then to get the next one, instead of finding my location a second time, I just substitute the string out and make a smaller string with just what's there. So this is the more practical thing that I use all the time, right? So substitute that for that. And so in our example of, you know, trying to get rid of the first two sentences to only show the second sentence, <laughs> So what I'll do is like that. All right, something like that. Okay, so we substituted. So then now that that is text, all right, and I part, pardon me as this is about to get really complicated for a second. But so we're going to say substitute that string. And what do I want? I want the second sentence to yanked out. So I'm going to grab my code for the second sentence. Control copy. Pretty sure it did not copy all of it. So let's go over here. Oh, this one. And so then, so then grab the second sentence. It missed the M. There it is. So grab the text of the second sentence and then substitute it for something like that. All right, so substitute this. Oh, because oh, mid starts with a capital M, Shane. There you go. Grab that and that. Substitute that out. And then now we're left with just please, please. So, and I show you this because in one of my really complicated ones, this was, was the best solution for me. It was basically go grab the whole thing, substitute in this thing I knew how to get rid of, gone. Then take that, feed that into another substitute, cut it out, and then I was left with just please, please. So, not something you're going to do on day one, but just I want you to think about the fact you can nest all this stuff in type of each other, and that's how you end up making automated string manipulation. And the first time you do it, it's going to take you eight hours. I apologize, but it's okay. It'll be worth the effort when you're all said and done. All right? So that is um, our friend substitute. We also then had... Um, so there's replace, I'm not gonna really, I'll throw a label on here and talk about it for one second, but I, 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 I'm not a fan of replace, especially where you're at right now, um, but we'll make sure you understand what it does. And so all replace does, it does the same exact thing that substitute does, but this time we're gonna have to give it a, uh, where do we wanna start and then what, where do we wanna end? So if you always wanna go into, you know, we always wanna start at the fifth character and replace the first 10 characters and replace it with a certain thing, then replace is gonna be your friend. Um, it's just not, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it hasn't come up for me. I just don't end up doing it. I don't know what else to say. Right, so we'll start at character uh, one, two, three, we'll start at character four, and then we'll replace uh, 12 characters, or we'll replace uh, four characters and we'll replace them with bad, All right? And so then now you'll see the sentence is going to say, my badness chewy is fat. I don't know, I, who lets me make these things up? Uh, but that's how it works. And remember, you could go do a find for where does my, uh, where does uh, goodness start, right? So you could just do, could have done find, um, 
text input three. You notice how many times I've had to type text input three? That that's normal. All right, so fine, good. So find good. Oh, why aren't you working? It should work. Let's see. So what I'll do? I'll grab this, copy, throw a label on the screen. Let's see what number does it come back? Oh, find text input three text. Am I crazy? Oh, I did it backward. Duh. See, this is why I throw these labels on the screen so I can figure out what I did. It's going too fast. Get rid of that. That. There we go. Let's copy that back into your formula. Right there. There you go. Okay, so that's replace, substitute. I think the only one I had uh, left, I was going to mention there's a couple more we're not going to use today, but if you get deeper down the rabbit hole, there's split. So split is for taking um, like a string, like say you've got a bunch of like comma separated values and you want to take that and turn that into a single column table. Split is a function for that. And then concat is a function for combining a bunch of text uh, out of those single column tables. But that's a different video, so hopefully in a couple weeks I'll put out the video on that. But concat comes up a lot in some of my really complex solutions and I'm trying to get several of these little smaller videos like this one out so that then when I do concat, which will be much more complicated, we can kind of reference back to some of these. So, all right. Hopefully that helps you guys though. I know that's a whole bunch. I know at the end it gets really crazy and I promise the first time you do this, it is hard, but break it into baby steps and power through because once you become a string master, like I think I am, but I'm really not, it uh, will help you, okay? Um, other thing I'll mention is, I'm sorry I've been a little slow in videos, the reason for that though is we are, A, I work 12 hours a day, seven days a week on customer apps, but then we're also writing that Power Apps training course. So go check that out, powerapps911.com slash training. And remember, if you sign up and you mention uh, YouTube or you know Chewy or something like that, we get you 10% off the class because you deserve a, a treat for uh, going and watching this. So, but that's four or five days of live training with me. There's hands-on labs, lots of fun to be had. So check that out, all right? Thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.